twentieth day of abide in christ by andrew murray this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by christopher smith that you may bear much fruit he that abideth in me and i in him the same bringeth forth much fruit herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit john chapter fifteen verses five and eight we all know what fruit is the produce of the branch by which men are refreshed and nourished the fruit is not for the branch but for those who come to carry it away as soon as the fruit is ripe the branch gives it off to commence afresh its work of beneficence and anew prepare its fruit for another season a fruit-bearing tree lives not for itself but wholly for those to whom its fruit brings refreshment and life and so the branch exists only and entirely for the sake of the fruit to make glad the heart of the husbandman is its object its safety and its glory beautiful image of the believer abiding in christ he not only grows in strength the union with the vine becoming ever surer and firmer he also bears fruit yea much fruit he has the power to offer that to others of which they can eat and live amid all who surround him he becomes like a tree of life of which they can taste and be refreshed he is in his circle a centre of life and of blessing and that simply because he abides in christ and receives from him the spirit and the life of which he can impart to others learn thus if thou wouldst bless others to abide in christ and that if thou dost abide thou shalt surely bless as surely as the branch abiding in a fruitful vine bears fruit so surely yea much more surely will a soul abiding in christ with his fullness of blessing be made a blessing the reason of this is easily understood if christ the heavenly vine has taken the believer as a branch then he has pledged himself in the very nature of things to supply the sap and spirit and nourishment to make it bring forth fruit from me is thy fruit found these words derive new meaning from our parable the soul need but have one care to abide closely fully wholly he will give the fruit he works all that is needed to make the believer a blessing abiding in him you receive of him his spirit of love and compassion towards sinners making you desirous to seek their good by nature the heart is full of selfishness even in the believer his own salvation and happiness are often too much his only object but abiding in jesus you come into contact with his infinite love its fire begins to burn within your heart you see the beauty of love you learn to look upon loving and serving and saving your fellow men as the highest privilege a disciple of jesus can have abiding in christ your heart learns to feel the wretchedness of the sinner still in darkness and the fearfulness of the dishonour done to your god with christ you begin to bear the burden of souls the burden of sins not your own as you are more closely united to him somewhat of that passion for souls which urged him to calvary begins to breathe within you and you are ready to follow his footsteps to forsake the heaven of your own happiness and devote your life to win the souls christ has taught you to love the very spirit of the vine is love the spirit of love streams into the branch that abides in him the desire to be a blessing is but the beginning as you undertake to work you speedily become conscious of your own weakness and the difficulties in your way souls are not saved at your bidding you are ready to be discouraged and to relax your effort but abiding in christ you receive new courage and strength for the work believing what christ teaches that it is he who through you will give his blessing to the world you understand that you are but the feeble instrument through which the hidden power of christ does its work that his strength may be perfected and made glorious in your weakness it is a great step when the believer fully consents to his own weakness 
and the abiding consciousness of it and so works faithfully on fully assured that his lord is working through him he rejoices that the excellence of the power is of god and not of us realizing his oneness with his lord he considers no longer his own weakness but counts on the power of him of whose hidden working within he is assured it is this secret assurance that gives a brightness to his look and a gentle firmness to his tone and a perseverance to all his efforts which of themselves are great means of influencing those he is seeking to win he goes forth in the spirit of one to whom victory is assured for this is the victory that overcometh even our faith he no longer counts it humility to say that god cannot bless his unworthy efforts he claims and expects a blessing because it is not he but christ in him that worketh the great secret of abiding in christ is the deep conviction that we are nothing and he is everything as this is learnt it no longer seems strange to believe that our weakness need be no hindrance to his saving power the believer who yields wholly up to christ for service in the spirit of a simple childlike trust will assuredly bring forth much fruit he will not fear even to claim his share in the wonderful promise he that believeth on me the works that i do shall he do also and greater works than these shall he do because i go to the father he no longer thinks that he cannot have a blessing and must be kept unfruitful that he may be kept humble he sees that the most heavily laden branches bow the lowest down abiding in christ he has yielded assent to the blessed agreement between the vine and the branches that of the fruit all the glory shall be to the husbandman the blessed father let us learn two lessons if we are abiding in jesus let us begin to work let us first seek to influence those around us in daily life let us accept distinctly and joyfully our holy calling that we are even now to live as the servants of the love of jesus to our fellow men our daily life must have for its object the making of an impression favorable to jesus when you look at the branch you see at once the likeness to the vine we must live so that somewhat of the holiness and the gentleness of jesus may shine out in us we must live to represent him as was the case with him when on earth the life must prepare the way for the teaching what the church and the world both need is this men and women full of the holy ghost and of love who as the living embodiments of the grace and power of christ witness for him and for his power on behalf of those who believe in him living so with our hearts longing to have jesus glorified in the souls he is seeking after let us offer ourselves to him for direct work there is work in our own home there is work among the sick the poor and the outcast there is work in a hundred different paths which the spirit of christ opens up through those who allow themselves to be led by him there is work perhaps for us in ways that have not been opened up by others abiding in christ let us work let us work not like those who are content if they now follow the fashion and take some share in religious work no let us work as those who are growing liker to christ because they are abiding in him and who like him count the work of winning souls to the father the very joy and glory of heaven begun on earth and the second lesson is if you work abide in christ this is one of the blessings of work if done in the right spirit it will deepen your union with your blessed lord it will discover your weakness and throw you back on his strength it will stir you to much prayer and in prayer for others is the time when the soul forgetful of itself unconsciously grows deeper into christ it will make clearer to you the true nature of branch life its absolute dependence and at the same time its glorious sufficiency independent of all else because dependent on jesus if you work abide in christ there are temptations and dangers work for christ has sometimes drawn away from christ and taken the place of fellowship with him 
work can sometimes give a form of godliness without the power as you work abide in christ let a living faith in christ working in you be the secret spring of all your work this will inspire at once humility and courage let the holy spirit of jesus dwell in you as the spirit of his tender compassion and his divine power abide in christ and offer every faculty of your nature freely and unreservedly to him to sanctify it for himself if jesus christ is really to work through us it needs an entire consecration of ourselves to him daily renewed but we understand now just this is abiding in him just this it is that constitutes our highest privilege and happiness to be a branch bearing much fruit nothing less nothing more be this our only joy end of twentieth day